Hello again, gamers. Welcome back for another episode of Making Heroes. On this episode of Making Heroes, I'm going to be making the character Guts from Berserk. If you're not familiar with Berserk, there's a long-running manga and several anime series. Uh, I'm going to be making Guts in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So I'm going to run you through all the steps I would choose to make Guts. And I have his character sheet right here. I've already made him. So I'm going to run you through all the decisions I made to represent Guts in the game of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So the first thing is to have a concept. And now we've already got that because if you are familiar with Guts, you know what he's like. He's a big sword wielding raging maniac who is, is incredibly determined, a man of few words, and lifts an eight foot sword that's three feet wide. The thing is crazy. So we've got our concept, we know what we're going with. Uh, next, we're going to start uh, actually getting his ability scores. So now, of course, all your ability scores start as 10s. Uh, and as you are choosing your options, like your ancestry and your background and your class, you're going to get boosts to your ability scores and possibly penalties as well. So I'm going to run you through all of those to see how we're going to alter the abilities while keeping it very thematic for Guts from Berserk. Okay, so now we've set all our ability scores to 10 and we've we've got our, you know, archetype template to work off of. So we're going to move on to step three, which is we're going to select an ancestry. So now I chose to go with human uh, partially because the you know, partially because Guts is human, but not, I mean, not strictly. I don't have to, with this series, keep the race the same if there's another race that rules-wise would better represent the character. Uh, I And I'll get, come back to that in just a minute. But I mainly went with human because I don't feel Guts has any glaring disadvantages. He has some things that he might be just average at in regard to the ability score, but nothing that he should get negatives for. So, and humans just get two positive boosts to their ability score so for his first two boosts i decided to give him plus two to strength because strength is definitely going to be his key ability i mean for god's sakes he lifts an eight foot sword the thing is enormous and also to constitution because the second most important ability in my opinion for guts is constitution because he is one tough mamma jamma so now, what else do you get for being human? Human starting hit points are eight. So you fill in your eight hit points. They have a medium size, a 25 foot speed. They get two free ability boosts that we've already covered. They get common and they'll get additional languages equal to their intelligence modifier. So uh, now I, I do give him enough, I'm gonna spoil a little bit here, to get plus one in, uh, to his intelligence modifier. So in addition to common, I decided that Guts speaks Orc. I'll come back to why that is in a minute. That's not actually a thematic choice for Guts, but rather for his background in the game. And I'll get to that in a second. So now uh, the next thing is he gains the, the traits of human and humanoid. Now, after choosing the ancestry, we also have to choose the uh, heritage for our character. Now, I went with half Orc. I said I was going to come back to the fact that it doesn't need to actually be the same race as the fictional character uh, as long as thematically it goes with our character. And that's why I'm going for half-orc. Half-orc seems like it would make him more uh, ferocious, maybe a bit more intimidating, as well as a little bit more of an outsider, which Guts always feels like. You know, everyone's always a little afraid of him, keeps him a little bit at arm's length. Plus, there is a... Uh, being a half-orc gives him access to all the half-orc and orc... Uh, and there are some in there that I think would be very thematic for Guts to have. So uh, that's another reason I chose to make Guts a half-orc. So at first level, uh, a human gets a, ans a single first level ancestry feat. And I'm going to start right off with one of the orc ancestry feats that I really think is a good idea for Guts. So I gave Guts the uh, ancestry feat of orc ferocity. Now, also by being a half orc, by the way, he also gets low light vision. 
Uh, that's neither here nor there. It's just part of being half orc. So orc ferocity gets triggered when he would be at zero hit points, but not instantly killed. And what happens is um, he's not knocked out. Instead, he gets to stay at one hit point, but he increases his wounded condition by one. And the determined nature of guts fighting until the very end, even beyond what would would slay a normal man, uh, really this 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 feat felt very thematic for him and it's a uh the biggest reason i decided to make him uh a half orc was to get this feat at first level because it really really felt like something guts should have now for the background if you are familiar with the berserk mangas or animes you may know that guts was raised in a mercenary camp he has known nothing but the life of a mercenary from from the time he was in single digits of age. So for the background, I gave him the background of Warrior. Now, Warrior allows you to get two ability boosts. One must be to either Strength or Constitution, and the other one is a free ability boost. So I gave him an ability boost to both Strength and Constitution. Because, again, these are, in my opinion, the most two most important abilities for Guts. Moving on, you also gain the Intimidation skill, which also makes sense for Guts, and Warfare Lore skill, which again also name, uh, makes sense for Guts. You also gain the Intimidating Glare skill, and this makes so much sense for him because he is such a man of few words. He's the kind of person that could just make milk curdle with a luck, with his one eye. So, moving along, again now, uh, at some point I, w I do raise his intelligence enough that he's going to wind up with an extra language, and because I made him a half-orc, I decided that he would have learned both common and orcish. Now, for class, there was uh, never any doubt for me that Guts was going to be a barbarian. And the reason for this is that the reason, uh, the thing that inspired me to make this series of videos was realizing how easy it would be to make Guts in this system specifically with the barbarian character class. And it'll all make sense to you in a moment as I'm explaining what he gets for being a barbarian. So the first thing is the key ability for a barbarian is strength. And at first level, he gains a boost to strength, which again, most important ability. So makes total sense. In addition, Guts will get 12 hit points added to his hit points plus his constitution modifier, which his constitution modifier is going to be quite good. So he's going to get a nice extra boost uh, to his his hit starting hit points and then every time he goes up a level he gets 12 plus his constitution modifier for every level so as he goes up levels he's going to be getting quite a few hit points and and will be relying on his high number of hit points to stay alive plus the fact that i gave him orc ferocity so even if he loses all those hit points he still has a way to possibly stay living at first level, as a Barbarian, Guts will have expert proficiency in Perception. He will also have expert proficiency in his Fortitude saving throw, trained proficiency in his Reflex saving throw, and expert in his Will saving throw. He gains trained in Athletics, as well as trained in a number of additional skills equal to 3 plus your Intelligence modifier, which means... Uh, he will, again, have a plus one intelligence modifier, so he will gain four extra skill proficiencies. So, for those extra skills that he gains the trained proficiency in, I've decided to give Guts trained proficiency in acrobatics, because he is fairly agile with his combat maneuvers, as well as uh, Lore Demon and Lore Devil, because... He should know a bit about them because Guts' history is very intertwined with him hunting demons and devils, especially once you get a past a certain point in his storyline. And also survival, because he does need to survive out in the wilderness. After skills, uh, we see that Guts gets the trained proficiency in simple weapons, martial weapons, and unarmed attacks. He also gets trained in light armor, medium armor, and unarmored, and trained, of course, in the barbarian 
difficulty class. Now, as a starting barbarian character, Guts will gain access to the rage ability just like all characters do. So when when barbarian, excuse me, like all barbarian characters do, when barbarians tap into their rage, they do it as a single action. And once they're tapped into their rage, uh, they gain a number of temporary hit points equal to their level plus their constitution modifier. Uh, the frenzy lasts for one minute, minute or until there are no perceived enemies around them. Uh, or if they fall unconscious, whichever comes first. And while raging, they deal two extra damage with their, their weapons and unarmed attacks. Um, they also get a negative one penalty to the armor class, so they're a little easier to hit. And they cannot use any actions with the concentrate skill. Plus, they may gain extra bonuses based on their instinct. So now, instinct is an interesting thing with the barbarians in Pathfinder. And again, this is getting right to the heart of why I chose to make Guts the first character I was going to film a episode of Making Heroes with. Because the instincts are incredibly customizable. There are all sorts of instincts with, that have to do with some sort of bizarre supernatural element in your ancestry, either that you're descended from a supernatural creature or, or it cursed you or blessed you or something of that sort. And specifically, it's the giant instinct is what I'm going to choose for guts. Because listen to this and tell me this doesn't sound like guts. So your rage gives you the raw power and sometimes size of the giant. This doesn't necessarily mean that you revere giants, you might scoff at them or try to slay them, but here's what you get. First off, you have an anathema to failing to face a personal challenge to your strength, and you gain the ability to use a weapon built for a large creature. So now, right there, the build using a weapon built for a large creature, that is exactly what Guts does. He uses a gigantic sword. So you gain access to one weapon of the uh, of that size uh, that would be available to you at character creation. It's the normal price and bulk for a weapon of its size. Uh, but when wielding such a weapon in combat, you increase your additional co damage from rage from two to six. But you gain the clumsy one condition. Now, and because of its unwieldy size. All right, so so this is this is exactly why I chose to make guts a barbarian it is specifically to give him the giant instinct and be able to use that large weapon because that is the most defining characteristic of guts is his enormous sword. So eventually, if he gets weapon specialization, he's even going to get to increase that six damage to ten, and if he eventually gets uh, greater weapon specialization, it goes from 10 to an 18 extra damage. So this extra damage for using the, the large weapon is going to eventually gone, go up. In addition, while he's raging, he gets resistant to bludgeoning damage and your choice of cold, electricity, or fire. I chose fire. Uh, it just seemed to make sense for his hatred of the demonic creatures. And, and there you go. So that is what I have chosen for Guts's uh, instinct. Now, at first level and every even number level thereafter, Guts as a Barbarian will gain a, gain a class feat. So, for Guts' first level class feat, I have chosen to give him Sudden Charge. It takes two actions and it allows him to stride twice and then attack. Uh, it really seems to represent his ferocity in combat to me. Uh, the two actions, it's kind of like a, a three actions for the cost of two actions, so he could still get a second attack after he does it, uh, which really seems, you know, like his kind of unrelenting uh, method of attack where he just wades into battle and rips people apart with his big sword. So now we move on to step six, which is to determine the ability scores, because beyond all of the ability boosts, or uh, in some cases, when... Uh, making Pathfinder characters of, of uh, ancestries other than human, you might even have a penalty in there. But after all of those, you also get four ability boosts of four different abilities. Now, so far, we have really just given boosts to strength and constitution. But at this point, I'm going to give, a, while I'm going to give two of the ability boosts to strength and constitution again, boosting strength up to a maximum starting score of 18, that's the highest you can start with, and constitution up to a 16, I'm also going to boost dexterity to a 12, because Guts is not a slouch when it comes to being 
dex dexterous and i'm also going to give him a boost to intelligence because he is not stupid he sometimes lacks wisdom because he'll run in in cases where he shouldn't so i'm going to leave that the average 10 and his charisma isn't great because he's not uh he's he's kind of a a often seen as an outsider and a bit of a ferocious and scary character but not charismatic so i'm going to leave that at the average of 10 as well so now we've got all of those class details recorded and written down and the next thing is to move on to buying equipment so now uh, you get 150 silver pieces to start with when buying your equipment, and I have put them to quite good use. So the first thing is, of course, I need to get his sword. His sword is so important to the, the concept of Guts. So what I did was I bought Guts a great sword meant for a large creature. So this thing is enormous. And, and with that great sword, again, it can be used uh, with slashing damage, but it's got versatile with piercing damage. Uh, with all of his bonuses that he's gotten from his abilities and his, as well as his trained in, in using this sort of weapon, he gets a plus seven to his hits with the great sword, which is pretty awesome. And the great sword does 1d12 damage, either slashing or because it's versatile, piercing damage. But... In addition to that 1d12, while he is in the middle of a Barbarian Rage, he will get plus 6 to that damage. So at first level, when raging, he will do 1d12 plus 6 damage with a single strike, which is amazing. Now, the next two uh, weapons I purchased for Guts, I purchased simply because they were very characterful th for things we see either on him or him use in the mangas and animes, and that is daggers. I purchased... Uh, Four daggers for him uh he gets a plus four to throw the daggers and th since they were a thrown weapon he actually gets to add his strength damage to the dagger damage when throwing them which means they are 1d4 plus four damage so that makes them actually not too bad for a ranged weapon if he doesn't want to get close to his enemy or maybe if he's just on his way to getting in close to an enemy and if he's at long range and has to strike at long range we have seen in some cases guts use a crossbow now, there isn't a repeating crossbow in here like the one he uses, so I just went with a standard crossbow because that was about as close as I could come to, and it's got a really good range, and it does 1d8 piercing damage. And actually, with all of his, um, with being trained in it and, and actually getting a plus one dexterity modifier, he actually gets a plus four to hit with that crossbow, so that's not too bad. In addition, for purchasing items for Guts, I decided to give Guts the breastplate because guts is often seen wearing a breastplate and that gives him a fairly nice armor class total with uh with everything his armor class is normally an 18 though it will go down to a 17 while he is in the barbarian rage uh, i also bought him 20 bolts for his crossbow and an adventurer's pack and gus has plenty of strength so he can carry all this and the adventurer's pack comes with lots of things he would need and I even had 11 silver pieces left over just in case he decides he wants to buy a beer or some food at a tavern during the first adventure before he gets paid from whatever his first mission is. So there you have it. That is all of the, the mechanical choices in making guts in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. After that, you just go to the finishing details like alignment you know whether they're good or evil war or chaos and where you want to go along those lines age gender etc so obviously guts should be male because he's a male character alignment i struggled with a little bit this was one that was a little a little tough for me but guts seems to have really no respect for the law so i figured he's got to be chaotic and guts isn't really good and he's not really evil either so i decided to go chaotic neutral for guts um, it just felt appropriate for him that he be chaotic neutral. So there you have it. Uh, here is my Guts character sheet. As you can see, he has a total plus uh, total plus four bonus to his uh, strength and a plus three bonus to his constitution, by far his two biggest things. He has a starting 23 hit points with an 18 armor class and a plus seven to hit with his large greatsword. So Guts is 
done, and that is how I made Guts in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Now, let me know in the comments down below which ones of my decisions do you disagree with? Or, which ones do you totally agree with? How would you have made Guts in Pathfinder 2nd Edition? Also, let me know in the comments down below, what other characters would you like to see me make in Pathfinder 2nd Edition? I have a few planned out, but I'm open to suggestions. And this, this system is so versatile, I really want to make lots of characters using this and document them on videos. Also, listen, this character sheet was... Uh, posted in the comments of one of my videos by one of my uh, viewers. I'm going to post a link to it. It's a form fillable, uh, mostly form fillable character sheet for Pathfinder 2nd Edition that is really good. So I highly recommend uh, checking this out. It's going to be in the description down below. So check out this character sheet. It's, it's very nice. I really like it. Um, and I'm going to also in the description post who it was who had posted this, who had made this character sheet. Uh, who unfortunately I forgot to remember their name. I'm, I mean, you know what? I'm going to put their, their name up on the screen here so you can see it because they're awesome and they made a really cool character sheet for Pathfinder 2nd Edition and I really appreciate them putting it up for everybody to use for free. So that is really awesome of them. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see me do more making characters for Pathfinder 2nd Edition based on characters from books, movies, TV shows, and comic books, be sure to give it a like. Share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And hit that little bell icon so you get alerts every time I upload a new video. And until next time, game on.